Okay, we're back, and now that we've got our rollers here in the form of our bearings installed in the top of the frame, and we've got our motors installed in the bottom, uh, we're going to start putting the rails on. I've got one of them installed here. One note about the motors before we continue is you'll see, as I zoom in here, that there is a cork gasket there between the uh, motor and the frame that I've put in. It wasn't on the original parts video that I did. Uh, it was something that I overlooked, but I picked these up from Crunch Tech, and they're about two millimeters thick, and they're a nice little uh, squishy gasket that should reduce any vibration that comes off that motor and increase the quality of the prints. Uh, the problem I had when I originally tried to put them on was that the 8 millimeter bolts that secure the motor were no longer long enough, so I had to go ahead and get, grab some uh, 10 millimeter bolts that took that extra 2 millimeters into account, and then readjust these pulleys. Another thing I'll say before we go on any further is that when you're, uh, when you're setting that pulley, it's real easy to lay the top here uh, over it and just line it up with that so that when this bottom geared pulley that drives the belt is lined up with that. So if you lay the top directly over the bottom before you do these set screws that hold the pulleys on the motors there, you can get them perfectly aligned. Okay, moving on to the vertical struts, there's some stuff you're going to want to do before you uh, put this on. We've got one installed to show you what it looks like, um, but there's some prep work you're going to want to do. I'm going to show you that here real quick right now. So before you go ahead and put the vertical struts in, you're going to want to get the bolts started for, uh, for all three of these bearing rails. Um, there are 16 holes in each of these and each one of those holes takes a 6 millimeter Allen uh, and a nut on the back side uh, and it slides down into the open beam railing very much like the, uh, the other stuff. It just slides right down in there uh, and you can see but at any rate, if you go ahead and get all of these started for all, I know, and there's a lot of them, so uh, at 16 for each rail, that's 48 uh, total. So uh, you want to use the 6 millimeter bolts. They're 2 millimeters shorter than the ones you were using in the frame construction. And uh, once you've got that done, you can go ahead and start to install the vertical rails into here. One thing I'll say about installing these vertical rails in is they should go all the way through and be flush with the bottom. And you'll see that. Like that. After you've done that, you can go ahead and tighten the two bolts right there. Um, the other thing I'll say is that if it'll let me focus, Working on these holes and making them as square as possible, uh, usually if you take a, a little nail file um, or just emery board file and, and go at those corners, each corner a little bit, and clean it up as much as you can, and, and these open beam will go through a lot easier. If it hangs up or sticks, don't force it. Uh, it is possible to crack this plastic, um, so what you, you want to do is, uh, if it sticks too bad, you just want to back it out and look, and you'll see a little obstruction or a piece that's sticking out in there that you can file off real quick. And, and if you do that uh, continually and just keep working it in, don't wiggle it or, or any of that too much, uh, except maybe to get it out, wiggle it a little. Uh, but but you don't want to enlarge the hole or waller the hole out at all. Uh, you just want to clean it up. So, so any prep or cleaning that you do on those four corners is going to save you a lot of hassle installing the beams. You don't want them to wiggle. You want them to be nice and tight still, uh, but, but you don't want them to stick going in. And when they do stick because they're grabbing material, you want to back it out and clear that material before you continue. Okay, so the first thing to go on is this end stop. It's going to go on with these two little holes facing in or up towards the, the open, or towards the rail. Uh, so we're going to slide that on first. If you have problems sliding anything, just loosen the... And then, once that's on there, we can go ahead and start with this. Now, the, uh, as you just saw, these nuts fall off really, really easily. So, so you want to be very, very careful uh, when you're working with this so that uh, you don't have to start over because if halfway through one of the nuts falls off, then uh, you either have to abandon that particular Allen screw and pull it out or, uh, or you've got to 
pull the whole thing off and start over. But now that we've got the end stop down there, we can start working this on. Uh, you can see we're going to start that just by taking each nut and we unscrew it a little bit until we get it on. And then once it's passed, uh, screw it in some. Uh, not, don't crank it down, you still want it to slide, uh, but you want it to be screwed in enough to not have that nut fall off once it's already slid past the... Uh, and you do that with all 16. Squeaks or finds anywhere on the way down. Uh, you can usually figure out which one of the which one of the nuts is doing it. As I said, uh, tightening the ones that have already passed this little lip, which is the hardest part to get past. And not tight enough, mind you, to, to crank them down, but enough to, to keep that nut from falling off behind it will save you a lot of headaches. Now we've successfully gotten this all the way down onto the rail. Now we've successfully slid this rail down onto the open beam. Uh, we need to set where it sits before we tighten it down. Uh, we do that by taking that space and adjusting it to 70 millimeters exactly. And you're going to want to make sure that, that that space right there is the same for all three of your arms. Uh, once you get that set, can tighten down the 16 Allen bolts and I do that in a zigzag fashion to not create any odd torques uh, on the arm when we're doing it. Uh, once it's tightened down then at that point uh, this end stop can be pulled back up uh, to where it touches the rail and the last end stop on the top can be installed. At that point we've got an assembled arm. Okay, now that we've got our three vertical arms installed, including the rails, uh, we can go ahead and get the top on there. Um, now this right here is the top piece. Focus in. Um, these little squares here are really the only part on the top and on the bottom are the only part that I've had to pay any real attention to as far as finishing, aside from just reaming out some of the holes that the screws go through. You'll take a, a square needle file, something with a square edge, and just go at these the squares, especially on the smooth part where it was sitting up against the heated bed, uh, it'll kind of whoosh out a little bit and so it needs to be uh, opened back up and made square and you can use the, the top part where it was away from the heated bed as a guide uh, more and just make sure that the, everything is squared off and that'll ensure that it actually fits into this beam here. When you go to install the top piece, uh, the smooth part is the side that goes down. You can tell that it's a side that goes down because it has a little hexagonal shaped hole for the nut. Uh, that's the nut for the diagonal Allen bolt that will uh, adjust the belt tensions and, uh, and help hold this on there. After a little bit of finish work on the little square holes here, uh, the top did go on pretty nicely. It'll now slide up and down, which is what we need to be able to tension the belts. The next step is to take a 35 millimeter Allen bolt, uh, three millimeters wide, and go ahead and thread it down into the hole diagonally that you see right there in the middle. On the other side, there's a hexagonal shaped hole 
that is for uh, this lock nut. And so once that threads all the way down, you can go ahead and install the lock nut. And you don't have to tighten that up right now. You'll do that on all three of those, and this is our belt tensioner. So tightening this will pull the top up and tighten the belt. Loosening these bolts on all three sides will loosen it and allow that to, to drop down. Once you get the belt tensioned how you want, uh, there's another Allen bolt here to, to lock it in. But this is uh, these three diagonal bolts here are going to be essential for tensioning the belt. It's me from the future. Don't do it, man! Seriously, at this point I make a couple of uh, small mistakes here in the build. I'd like to point them out right now so that you don't make them. Uh, when I put the top here on, I failed to realize that I needed to already have the Bowden Air Tripper installed on the vertical rail if I wanted it there. So if you're following along or you're building one of these as well and you want to have this uh, Bowden extruder on the vertical rail, it needs to go on before the top goes on. Uh, the second thing that I do that uh, came back and bit me while I was pulling the top off uh, is that I used locking, or, uh, locking nuts on these adjusters for the tensioner for the belt. Uh, I've gone ahead and changed that and just put normal nuts on. Um, aside from that, everything seems to be going real well here in the future. We've got the entire effector assembly put together and we actually had all of the belts on and tightened before I realized I had to pull the top off. Anyway, uh, back to the build.